I want to tell you about stars, constellations, galaxies, and wormholes in a data warehouse. So let's start with OLTP. This is your standard transactional system that your businesses use to track their everyday, day-to-day -day processes like sales. So some aspects of OLTP. It's going to use at least third normal form. and We've discussed that in some of our other lessons, what third normal form means. But tables are broken down efficiently so that they can be referred to using a universal identifier, a key. This creates a compact and efficient structure and eliminates redundancy. OLTP allows us to typically see the current state of business data. As things get modified and deleted, there is no accurate audit trail of all these changes so that you could get the complete historical view back from the OLTP system. It's gone. And in OLTP, the schema can be oftentimes very complex. Many OLTP systems use an unbalanced, ragged schema to satisfy the requirements of third normal form. As a result, OLTP models can become complex labyrinths, which do not encourage users to casually browse through them. Now let's compare this to the data warehouse, OLAP. Now by contrast to OLTP, OLAP is typically going to use second normal form for its dimensions. It's going to allow a bit more redundancy in, in those dimension tables. But it's going to be very flattened as a result of this design. So instead of many tables like you get in your OLTP model, the, the plan with OLAP is to, is to reduce the number of tables to create larger, flatter tables. OLAP, unlike OLTP, is going to very easily allow you to track changes to your data over time. Data warehouses are not typically modified. You do not typically delete the data or change the data. You merely add to the data. So as time goes forward, you're able to watch all the things that change throughout time that typically you might lose through a modification in an OLTP system. And lastly, OLAP provides a human readable schema. So let's compare that. Let's, let's take one last look at our OLTP schema. And this is really just a, a maze is what OLTP often creates. So we're going to compare that to the type of design you need to use in an OLAP database. Here is the star schema, the core component of our data warehouse. Now, from a strictly database um, development standpoint, the star schema represents a many-to-many -many, uh, scenario. Let's take a look at our lemonade stands uh, main star schema. It's the sales star. In the middle of this star, in the orange box, is our sales fact, the number $35. So there's our fact, and that's a good fact. We made $35 is what that means. Uh, and on the dimensions surrounding that fact, in the blue circles, you see the dimension attributes. Uh, so I know something about that fact. So for my $35, what I know is uh, this occurred on Saturday. I sold $35 on Saturday. It was a cold and rainy day. I used uh, the Secret Mix 4 recipe. And I, had an ad I used the ad band 4 to 5, which means I spent somewhere between 4 and $5 on um, advertising. So I hope you can see when you compare this schema to the OLTP schema, it's far more readable. I can change the number, I can change the information inside the blue circles, and you'll be able to read it. Perhaps it might say something like, on Monday we made $50, it was a sunny day, we used recipe 5, and we did 3 to $4 worth of advertising. You can see how you can change out the values, and you can just continue to read it. In fact, I could even change out the fact here in the middle. So here we see 172. And this might represent the number of cups that I sold. So I sold 172 cups of lemonade on that day. So you can see one star can contain multiple facts. 
Here's another fact that might be contained in my sales star telling me that on Saturday, sales were up 15% from last Saturday. So from a high level, you can see what a star schema represents. One central set of facts, and then one set of dimensions that are sharing the, those facts. Star schemas can be compared to the OLTP many-to-many -many relationship. Some examples of many-to-many -many relationships are student to class, or instructor to class, or doctor to patient, or order to product. But typically those are two things that engage in a many-to-many -many relationship. What you have in a star schema are many things engaged in a many-to-many -many relationship centralized around one fact. So in other words, star schemas are simple models where one central table becomes the hub for several other tables to have a complex set of many-to-many -many relationships. Star schemas try to capture the business essence of the complex OLTP source systems which feed them and make the design human readable. Another fact in our system might be an expense fact. So here you see that I had an expense of five dollars on Saturday for lemons. Lemons in this case is the expense type there may be several other expense types. For instance, I have to buy ice. I have to buy sugar. I also have to buy advertising. So you can see this again represents a many-to-many -many relationship where many days have many different types of expenses. Another star schema that might exist in my lemonade stand is the customer satisfaction star. So here I can see a uh, percentage that tells me the satisfaction of the customers uh, based on the recipe that I used that day and they're analyzing a specific characteristic, in this case sweetness. So I know that for Secret Mix 4, the uh, sweetness characteristic causes a 70% satisfaction level. So you can see I can have separate individual stars inside my data warehouse. And what I really want to try to do is to connect those different stars, if it's at all uh, reasonable. And you can see this will create what is called a constellation. And a constellation schema is when I have multiple fact tables which can share dimensions. Let me show you an example in my lemonade stand. So here we see my lemonade stand. And again, I have an expense fact. Um, let's start in the middle, actually, right here. So I had $35 on Saturday. But then it also turns out that I had an expense of $5 for lemons on Saturday. So Saturday here becomes, in my constellation, a wormhole, allowing me to jump from one fact to another. By the same token, down here, I can see that on Saturday I sold $35 on a cold and rainy day using Secret Mix 4. And that's a wormhole over to the satisfaction or survey fact. So uh, you can see these wormholes get created. And the way that we do that is we allow different facts to share the same exact dimensions. So here you can see wormholes across a constellation. So a constellation schema is the result of creating a single warehouse with multiple fact tables for one department or business purpose, or in a larger constellation, different departments might use shared dimensions to be able to create very advanced reports that combine data sets that were previously isolated from each other. So the next step up from that is the galaxy schema. And here you see a galaxy schema, which is where multiple companies uh, all have their own individual constellations, their own individual warehouses. And you can actually see uh, by using galaxy wormholes, in this case, where companies can share, again, share dimensions. And if, if, if three different companies, in my example, all were able to use the same exact dimension, they would be able to use that wormhole to join their data together. And those are stars, constellations, galaxies, and wormholes.